All right, here are the changes to the actual, to the auto terrain cover. If we go into our master, I've tried to clean this up a fair bit. Anything that was here that could be automatically loaded into, say, mask and things like that, that could be loaded into the different layers. I just left those lay. I deleted those parts and left those layers at itself. I kept the ability to use a flow map, just a pure flow map, just in case you wanted to bring in something, some kind of mask specifically for a trail, but still have the ability to control the contrast and power and oomph of that coverage. Um, I've changed the tile terrain to where you can actually dial in the terrain size for your given material instance that you want to use per terrain. Since before, it was pretty much locked to the master material, so if you wanted to change that, you had to, um, you had to pretty much duplicate the entire material, and that is something I didn't want. I wanted the ability to have to use this against multiple different types of terrains, including like what I'm about to show you in a second. Um, one thing I had to add in is for tile terrains, for some reason, I guess the UV is off shift by, I guess, half of the size of the actual terrain when you bring in tile terrains. So I had to add the ability to shift that by half of the size of the terrain when using tile terrains versus one solid mass of terrain. Um, we still have our global. One thing I've added here is being able to paint procedural foliage data. And what I'm gonna show you, this is one thing I've been trying to get working for a while, but for some reason it just hasn't worked for me until now. So what this does is allows you to actually paint on the terrain a mask, technically an invisible mask, which is why I have an ability here to show the debug color for what you're painting. But what you can do is paint an invisible mask and use the experimental tool that Epic has for the procedural foliage generator to generate those trees with their algorithm across that area without having to go in and drop in square tree blockers and things like that. You can actually have more control and paint that onto your terrain and then use the tool to stop auto save. You can use that tool to generate trees within that restricted area. Uh, I've reordered these a few, maybe. It's been a while since I looked at this order stack. I'm just trying to get a good understanding of what should be able to paint over what, what can cancel out another type of grass. Again, it's something that you can come in here and play with, but this is what I was trying to do to be able to get some kind of understanding on what exactly I want the hierarchy of the actual terrain to be. I've also brought in back the the view distance calculation. Before, one of the reasons it was so heavy because I'm an idiot apparently, and I put a camera calculation with absolute world position inside of each and every single material function when technically since that is a heavy calculation it should technically be done once so I moved it outside of those functions and tested it and got better results with just passing that mass that's generated and calculated into each of those so they can do their own blending for your distance fades for your near and far textures um, I still have the grass type. I haven't found any way to make these actual parameters so you can come in and control the different grass types per material. But one thing I am going to do when I get around to actually trying to make a theme based material, so like desert material, farmland material, applesauce material, whatever, I can just have the majority of all of this. Ah, 
the majority of all of this inside of material uh, one material function which will still work and then the only thing that would be specific to the actual material would be the outputs that plug into this and the outputs that would plug into your final color where all of this other stuff will be will remain inside of a material function that can exist across all different material themes so that's one solution I have for that I'll see if I can get around to that when I'm as I'm making my game but blah um I have added the ability to change the water level I think I've had this before I tried to sync the uh, actual moving of the in-game water level with that but I got uh, terrible results when I tried to do that um, but now I have the ability for you to actually completely override the calculated beach with the any kind of painted beach so you can either use the automatic based on height or you can just paint your sand however you want to um, and then pipe that into where it needs to go in the material itself uh, I think I also switched around the order of the sand and the riverbed because I actually ran into the case where I was trying to make a river to make sure that it was just like a little lake or lake or some kind of area but it just so happened to be at the same level as where I had a beach on another part of the island and I thought about it and I was like I technically want to override sand with river so I switched that around um I already talked about that I tried a different way of blending the material in with the land hopefully that helps a little bit I'm trying to see if there's anything else that may need explaining of course I'm using the new functions for setting and getting the attributes I love that feature add-on for the 14 release so I'm just gonna close this no not gonna save changes alright so you still have your master um, your master terrain material that has all your preset settings based on you know my repetitive crap of trying to get numbers that actually mean something and actually look good hopefully it does in the long run look good that number is wrong this should be the same number as this that's probably why I was missing normals from my cliff Yeah, that looks that looks a lot better. Okay. Oh, well, that was a last minute fix, I guess. But all of this information is still in here. I've grouped a lot of things under the macro data, anything that pretty much covers the entire land for your terrain, which will probably be better seen in an actual instance where it's used. So here's the one that I use for the tile terrain. So here in the macro I'm actually going to turn on this one as well to use the macro color. I didn't I decided not to use this for my map mainly because I didn't really like how the overlay looked with everything, so I just turned it off. But you have the macro, the macro brightness which is currently set to 0, which is technically disabled. Um you have the ability to change the terrain size. If you have a tile terrain, then you need to make sure this is checked so it offsets the macro material properly to cover the entire terrain. Um, you have your distance phase, which is just 20,000 for just a default number for the distance fade to switch between the um, near material scale and the far material scale so you can get less artif not artifacts I need the English so you can get better tiling no not better tiling so you can get rid of tiling for your actual terrain um, of course you can tell I'm still not used to talking so hopefully my words make sense um, 
I'm still not sure if I need the actual macro normal. Sometimes it looks better, sometimes it looks worse when I actually use the macro normal. But I still have it here as an option. Um, you have your macro trail to be able to add in your effects for your, you know, your sand and stuff like that. I am missing holes in my terrain. So you got all that stuff back there falling through here for all your little trail informations. Some of it's very light information, some of it's very heavy dirt information. Um, I really like how it looks in general, so hopefully that all works well for everybody if they're using that. Um, one thing I did notice is I had to actually tweak some of my brightness to bring the flow map out when I overlaid it. So hopefully that's helped some. trying to see okay so let me go in here and actually enable the procedural foliage color of which I probably should have did that before the giant compile of data so while that's compiling we're going to go in here and actually explain it so in here inside of the terrain if it will load, and then I'm about to crash it out. Inside the paint, you have all your different layers. Inside this layer, there's a procedural foliage data, which will just let you paint that mask information all over the terrain. Um, this is also linked to the procedural foliage, which is pretty much that solid. Uh, box that you see all around the terrain that's what it's going to use to generate and use that data to generate this foliage type across the terrain if I go inside this foliage type you can come down in here in the landscape layers add a new row and say hey I want this to spawn anywhere this data is actually mapped on the terrain and you can give your actual layer effect dial that you want to be able to control that in If I can get a con get control of my camera right now, if you can look at this pink area right here, now that I have the debug enabled, everywhere that I've painted pink, which is pretty a big color to stand off, so you can actually see what everything is doing, um, well, where everything is going to be, you can see exactly that everything is staying within this area based on this parameter type. Uh, these parameters, I've I've been playing around with them to see how they work, how good it can work, and how it can spawn the trees. Uh, change these definitely to something that probably actually looks better than the crap that I have. Um, I actually disabled the shadow casting on the terrain because I think I was getting performance issues on that and speaking of performance issues one thing I did in this release is to go through and from every level of every stage of actual usage from just the pure terrain cover to the adding textures and things like that I tried to make everything as optimal and close to 60 frames per second as possible the only thing that are really heavy right now, if I took away the grass, even with the trees, I still get 60 frames per second on an i7 and GTX 970. Um, I still get 60 frames per second. I drop down to 55%, uh, 55 frames per second normally when I have the, cra the grass on a crazy scale. Um, I've cranked it down a little bit in the release. So that way, majority of everybody should get a total of 60 frames per second the majority of time walking anywhere around this uh, big terrain. I also did this based on the stress test of this terrain. Ah, uh, auto save. Um, pretty much this terrain is an 8x8 eight eight terrain with a size of 1,009, 1, which pretty much is an 8K 
terrain area surface which in general I usually see take a performance hit when you do something this big so I wanted to make sure that even on a large 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 scale that the algorithms that I'm using to do all the slope calculations to blend things together all of that stays within as close as possible to the 60 frames per second um, and hopefully this is the best release of this that I've done so far I've even gone through and got rid of the old textures that were way too big not mappable and things like that and um, got some textures put them into bitmap to material to zero them out of any lighting information to have pretty flat albedo with the normal maps to help everything blend together evenly hopefully the results show that if not I tried um, one of my tiles they got corrupted from a blue screen I had earlier but I'll repair that before I upload it in a few minutes but hopefully this shows off everything I've also gone in here and uh, actually created a water plane from the using the one that I had for the ocean back there I've actually just made a, another blueprint in here in the area that probably shouldn't have blueprints in it I need to reorganize this better but inside the materials here I have a that was supposed to say water pun actor instead of water bun actor I should put 007 but anyway so I have my water pond actor they can throw out anywhere you want to add water it has that depth information same thing same thing that they have from the the water example it's nothing special um, let me see if I can delete that hopefully from all of this a lot of people can get in see how everything works learn something use this if you want however you please um i added a trail blah whatever but hopefully this will help this is probably close to like unless i do something major this will be how everything works going forward I'll probably come through and reorganize all this crap, delete stuff that's not used anymore, maybe work on better caustics, something. But most of the changes should be this release for stability, for usability. And hopefully all the people that told me that it needs better performance and things like that, hopefully this helps. Because, I mean, I went through and tried my best to look at all of the ins and outs of what I was doing to make sure it was done right and hopefully this is it. I'll upload it soon. Have a good day.